What is up guys? Welcome back to DCS World and welcome back aboard the FA-18C Hornet for another quick tutorial. Uh, to expand on the last video with regards to navigation, I want to show you a, another very useful navigation tool that will come into play uh, quite a bit when we start doing things like carrier operations and air-to-air -air refueling. And that is TACAN. TACAN is short for Tactical Air Navigation. It, uh, if you're familiar with civilian aviation at all, it's basically like a really souped up VOR. Uh, if you don't know what VOR is, don't worry about that. But TACAN is essentially a navigational, a radio navigational aid that allows us to essentially home in on a specific point where the radio station is actually broadcasting the TACAN signal. So to demonstrate this, I'm in active pause here and I'm actually just going to go into full pause and we're going to look at the F-10 map real quick. You can see where I am here over the Black Sea, just kind of floating there. We've got Batumi Air Base right over here on the coast. And if we look at the airport, we look here, we have TACAN in the aerodrome data, and we have a number here, 16, the letter X, and then in parentheses, BTM. 16X is the TACAN frequency for this airbase's TACAN station. In fact, you can actually see it here on the map. That's the physical location of the TACAN station that's broadcasting the TACAN radio signal. TACAN frequencies can be from, I believe it's 1 to 64, anywhere between 1 and 64, and they can either be X or Y. So you have that range of frequencies to play with. And air bases, uh, specifically NATO air bases, uh, Russian air bases don't use TACAN, but uh, NATO air bases do. So uh, Batumi is located in Georgia. On the Caucasus map, so thus it has a TACAN station. And its TACAN frequency, as per the map, is 16X or 16X ray if we want to use the phonetic alphabet. If we look up at, let's say, Kobaletti, Kobaletti Air Base has a TACAN frequency of 67X ray. And uh, I actually should correct myself on something I said before. Uh, the numbers here can go up to, I believe it's 60, 67 or 68, something like that. It's not an infinite range of frequencies, but uh, for the most part, the TACAN frequencies you'll get will either come from the F-10 map like this with the aerodrome data, or they'll come from your mission briefing. Uh, they'll be set up in the mission editor. Uh, and things like aircraft carriers and air refueling tankers can broadcast TACAN frequencies as well and theirs will be within the appropriate range to actually be usable. You won't see a TACAN frequency of like, you know, 95 X-ray or 110 Yankee, something like that. For our example, we'll, we'll use Batumi's TACAN frequency of 16 X-ray here, 16 X. So let's go back into our aircraft, unpause, but I'll stay in active pause here. In the Hornet, the way we access the TACAN settings, let's turn off my Jehemix. The way we access the TACAN settings is from the UFC. There's a button here labeled TCN, that's for TACAN. So if we press that button, we're now greeted with these options. So by default, the TACAN starts on channel one. If we want to say go to channel 16, one, six on the UFC, enter. And if you notice, we have an option here for X and Y with these two soft push buttons. It's currently set to X, uh, noted by this colon here. If we changed it to Y with this button, the TACAN frequency would now be 16Y. But for our purposes, for Batumi, it's 16X, so we want it on X. We want it in Transmit Receive. 
We can also do just receive mode, but then we don't get ranging information. So in transmit receive mode, we can get ranging information. There's also an air to air tack and mode, which is what we would use for the air refueling tankers. And I'll demonstrate that later on in the air to air refueling video. For now though, let's navigate to Batumi using TACAN. One thing we also need to do from this interface here is we also need to turn it on. So notice the on off button here. You press and hold that. Now the TACAN is on. And if we look, it's already shown up. If we look over at our HSI, which I have up on the right hand DDI, Notice this little triangle sort of looking symbol here. This represents the physical location of the TACAN station. It shows us where it is on this 2D plane. It also shows us our range and distance to that TACAN station as well as the TACAN's identifier. So we noticed from the F10 map that the TACAN's identifier was BTM for Batumi. So we see BTM here. The TACAN would be at a bearing of 053 degrees. So if we wanted to navigate to the TACAN station, we would need to go to 053 on our heading, and then we would fly right towards it. We would also box TACAN here. And now we have navigation symbology on the HUD, similar to what we had when we were navigating with waypoints. So I'm going to come out of active pause now and I'm going to turn towards the navigation aid here noted by the little hash mark on our heading tape. Let's keep the turn going. There we go and we'll level out. Quickly back into active pause here. So we're aimed towards the TACAN station if we look back at our HSI, we see where our nose is now pointed at that TACAN station. And we have our time to time to the TACAN station. And again, as I mentioned, our bearing and distance. One other function of the TACAN is we can actually specify a desired course. So if I go down here above the AMPCD, there's a little switch here, a rocker switch labeled CRS for course. If I start moving this around, notice on the HSI we have a course line with an arrow. Let's say I wanted to fly towards Batumi Air Base on a specific course. So right now my heading towards the station is 054 degrees, but what if I wanted to fly on a heading of 060 degrees. And we know we have 060 selected because down in the lower right corner of the HSI, we see CSEL for course select 060 degrees. And we can change that with the course selection rocker switch here. Or if we press and hold it for a few seconds, our UFC pops up with C cell here we can then click this button and then I can type in, let's say 070 in this case. And then it automatically sets that course line for us. So now we have some different symbology on our HUD. Instead of just a hash mark on our heading tape, we actually have a course deviation line. So this guy here, this arrow, and these two dots are our course deviation indication. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to unpause here. And because this course line is to the left of my path vector, it means the desired course is actually to the left of my airplane. So in order to get lined up with it, I need to turn left a bit to intercept that course line. So I'm just going to exaggerate the turn here. The course deviation line on the HUD also indicates the relative angle that we have towards it. So if you notice the course line on the HSI down here is sort of at a, an almost 45 degree angle to us. 
so is the course deviation line here on the HUD. Now, as we approach the course line, you're going to see this arrow, this line with an arrow on it, move towards my path vector. When that gets in the center, that's when we want to turn on course, turn on that 070 heading, and that will put us on that course line towards the TACAN station. And all of this will come in very handy later on during carrier operations where the course line is going to be very, very important. There you can see we're actually approaching it now. It's starting to move in towards our path vector. Each of those dots represents a uh, roughly a nautical mile of distance between the course line and our aircraft. It's approaching the center, so I'm going to start turning towards a heading of 070 degrees. I may overshoot it just a little bit here. Eh, it should be all right. Level out here, 070 degrees. Now that path vector is lined up with the course deviation line, so we are pretty well on course. A little bit of correction back towards 070 to intercept that course line. So we are now on the desired course, and you can see from our HSI, our airplane lines up with the line, and we are headed towards the TACAN station. So you can use TACAN to basically uh, as I mentioned, you can fly a specific course, and that's helpful for when you want to navigate a certain way towards an airbase, such as you can use the TACAN to line up with a runway in bad weather. Uh, and as I mentioned again later, the carrier operations will rely heavily on using course lines with the TACAN. Uh, hope that makes sense. Um, Get out there and, uh, you know, familiarize yourself with TACAN and how it functions. And I'll see you guys for the next video. Take care.